I have a problem. I have enough photos to make a 3D scan of a large portion of the Earth. And ever since Google Photos stopped being free, my photos became a mess across different services. And then what happens when I decide to not pay Papa Bezos? Do all my photos get deleted? Well, here's my solution. So I pulled up trusty Facebook Marketplace, and I found this beauty. And with my master negotiation skills, I got him to throw in a nice set of keycaps. Side note, PT keycaps are not a scam. They do actually feel a lot better. Anyhow, this bad boy has an Intel i3 from 2010. That is a stick of RAM. And let's play a little game. See, when I put this 2GB stick in, we get 2GB of RAM. Now let me put this 8GB stick in. How much RAM will the computer see? That's right! 4 gigabytes. Now, what happens when I put in two 8 gigabyte sticks? It crashes. It doesn't boot. Apparently, it's a known issue, Dell. Now, I was going to put this i5 in there, which supposedly has the same socket. Turns out it doesn't. It, it doesn't fit. We love proprietary hardware. Turns out it has two SATA ports and no extra power connectors. We love proprietary hardware. Don't worry, I'll get to the solution later. In short, I want to run a RAID 5 array. What that means is if I have four hard drives, it just uses some magic math so I can lose one of them and still have all the storage. But if you lose two, you're done. After some quick hunting and gathering, I now have four one terabyte hard drives. This one was spoiled. Now, about that proprietary power supply. Anyways. And just a couple adapters later, I have power for all the drives. Fun fact, if you want to turn on a computer power supply without the motherboard, all you have to do is find the green cable and short it to a nearby black cable. And it'll just turn on. Oh. If you ever wondered how a hard drive works. Now you might notice a small issue. A small issue. Yeah, no, this is not fitting in, in there. That's not gonna happen. If you thought I would just buy a PC case that would conveniently fit all this, who do you think I am? I'm gonna build my own. Basically the plan was to stack the power supply on the drives in a nice neat little box. Now to make this box, I was just going to fold this aluminum composite to make a nice outer shell. To be honest, I should have seen this coming. It's really just two very thin sheets of aluminum sandwiching a sheet of plastic. Anyways, new plan, I make little wooden squares to use as corner brackets. And ta-da, an enclosure that fits stuff. Now all it needs is a front and a back. Obviously, I'll make it out of this conveniently sized whiteboard. Since I did not steal this fan from a power supply, I happen to have this nice grill. Now before I was rudely interrupted by a file corrupting, I was just trying to show off how good of a job I did at cutting out this backplate. Since I only have a proper rack for three hard drives, I just have to mount the fourth one on some foam or something. <laughs> it was the best thing I had.
And then you just kind of jam it all in there. It's only your life's photos. Now about that problem of not having any SATA ports to plug into. You can get these cheap PCIe the SATA adapters. Okay, but really, just don't get an Optiplex. It actually worked. They're all here. Congratulations, you've just watched me build a computer with some hard drive sticking out of it. No, but, no, but don't go yet. We have a mesh network, so I'm plugging it in here. <laughs> to be completely honest, I don't really know what I'm doing. But here's what I did if you're interested, I guess. I've installed Linux on it, specifically Ubuntu, because Windows sucks. Then by setting up SSH, I can connect to it from anywhere on the network. To set up the RAID, I'm using a Linux program called MDADM. However, do not use the main drive as a directory. You have to make a subpartition. I learned the hard way. It makes all your drives disappear when you restart. Then using a program called Samba, you can share your drive on the network so anyone on your local network can connect to it. And by logging in, you can have it just like a normal drive on your computer. Now, only having your photos accessible when you're at home is kind of lame, so you have to set up a VPN to get in, because I don't want to let the shadow bots on the internet break into my network. For this, I'm using OpenVPN. However, no OpenVPN Community Edition and OpenVPN Server are two very different things. Lastly, I installed Docker to run this open source photo software I found called PhotoPrism. It's actually pretty good and it automatically makes a website for you and everything's hosted on your network. If any of that sounded interesting to you, I left links in the description to people that are actually qualified to tell you how to do this. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Obviously, you want to keep your actually important files in multiple locations, but I'm no longer reliant on big companies promising to keep my photos around. It actually works pretty well. Yes, it does draw about as much power as the intro level subscription to Google One, but I've got three terabytes. And can your Google Photo subscription host a Minecraft server? I didn't think so. Thanks for watching. Bye.